What's going on, mobile gamers? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play some PlayStation 2 on your Odin 2. I died. Let's jump in and up for gaming knowledge. Alright, so for the sake of this video, I am going to emphasize that I am using the Max model because my base model isn't logged into any Google accounts, and this part is very important before we actually get into this because Google Play will try to update your Aether SX2 to the latest version that is on the Google Play Store automatically. So we're going to turn that off, and then we're going to download the latest what I call the perfect version, the version that works with any front end of Aether SX2 that works without any issues, without any patches, or anything like that. And yes, it does have some graphical issues with some games, very minor, and that's just part of the, the actual emulation itself. I personally tried Nether SX2, which is a patch for this, and I don't recommend it yet because it's not fully easy to use and this is the easiest method for you to use in my opinion that being said we're gonna go to the google play store if you're logged into a google play account this part's very important navigate to your google play icon on the top right hand side scroll all the way down to settings go to network preferences go to auto update apps and then turn on or turn off don't auto update apps press ok now, also, I like to turn off other things in here, like net notifications for updates and stuff like that, but that's all up to your preference. Uh, but this part is very important so that Netherx or Aether SX2 doesn't actually update automatically. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Chrome. We're going to type in Aether SX2 builds GitHub. Now, this will have all of the builds for Aether SX2 if you click on the first link there. I will put the link below, of course, for you guys, and I'll put the link for the latest version as well that we're going to be actually installing. So this will have all of the latest builds. The last build that is right here is the one that I don't recommend because it has uh, ads and everything, and it doesn't work with, um, I don't know why I just downloaded that one. It doesn't work with any front ends, so you have to download the one that's 3668. That's the one that works perfectly fine. 1.53668 you're going to click on that one you're going to go click on view raw and then you're going to download it again and i guess maybe that was the latest one that we actually downloaded so you can double check that go to your downloads and yeah that was the one i thought they had the the 4048 or whatever that one was let's go and install this for the very first time click install click open now you're going to also need to download the BIOS file, which are linked in the description below as well. I have added those for you so that you can just download them and make it easy for you to actually get them set up for PAL version games and for American version games. I'm just going to say it that way. Click next, click next again. Don't worry about reading any of that. Now, I'm going to upscale a lot of my games to 16 by 9 for widescreen, and I'm going to keep my GPU at OpenGL. And I'm going to go to two times resolution, which makes the game look a lot better. That's basically the gist of what that does. I'm going to show you another setting that I do to make it look a lot smoother and cleaner looking on our device. So let's click next. Now we're going to import our BIOS. After you've downloaded that BIOS file in the link below, I'm going to show you what files you're going to get after you unzip it. This is going to be the BIOS file that I'm going to be sharing for you. It's going to be zipped and compressed. If you want to learn how to unzip it, I have videos for that as well. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So go into that file. You're going to install the SPH or SCPH 39001.bin. That's for the American. And if you want PAL versions, you're going to install that as well. I'm going to select the PAL version because my games are PAL region. Now, if you find any issues, I'm pretty sure it automatically, if I stand corrected i've never noticed this i have both american and pal version games it automatically switches between them but i'm just going to select that and make sure that i select that click next now we're going to add our game directory i have my games in my ps2 folder so i'm going to just use this folder i'm not going to let you guys know how to get games you can search that up i have videos about that as well and if you want to search out any videos on my channel you can go and do that click next again click finish now there's our games. We're going to go click those three lines on the top right hand side. We're going to go to app settings. We're going to go to graphics. 
I'm going to scroll all the way down. So some games, a lot of games actually render really well at three times. I don't notice any difference on my eyes, I guess, but it's up to you. I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says FX 8A or AA shader smooths out the image by applying fast approximation and aliasing as post-processing shader. This does make a huge difference to my eyes, at least it makes it look a lot smoother. So that's all I'm going to do for that for graphics. I'm going to go back into app settings and you can see a whole bunch of other stuff in here. So your memory card, your BIOS, all that kind of stuff. If you forgot to import your BIOS, you can go back into here and import it. These are your memory card slots. You can create new memory cards for different games if you want to or different profiles. But I have an advanced video that's coming out for that as well. So go all the way back. Go to controller settings. You're going to go to touchscreen. You're going to click on the first option, which is touchscreen controller view. You're going to turn that to none because we don't want to see those touchscreen controllers. Now we're going to go to controller port 1 and we're going to set up all our controller buttons. So my D-pad is my D-pad buttons, of course, which is going to be up, down, left, right. And yeah, triangle is my X for me that I'm just setting this up based off of what a PS2 controller is set up to. So triangle is X, circle is A, B is X, square is Y. Starting select, very straightforward, honestly. This part is pretty straightforward. Your L1 and L2 buttons are the top left two buttons, R1, R2, and your analog in. Sometimes I accidentally press down on the joystick, as you saw there. So make sure that you only just press it in. And there we go, I have two buttons. There we go, automatically adding. So once you see button 106 and 107, that means that you've set it up properly. Now you gotta set up your actual joystick, go up, right, down, left, and then your right joystick, up, right, down, and left. Pretty straightforward and easy for all that kind of stuff. If you've never done this before, then maybe this is kind of new to you. Now click back, click back, don't click back again, click back again, click back again, click back again, go all the way to the beginning, and then open up the game. That didn't really do anything I just accidentally did that and then we're gonna load up a game and if you want to set up your hotkeys for example so if you press the back button this opens up your menu and there's your load and save states and your toggle frame limiter your toggle frame limiter basically speeds up the game and I'm gonna show you some hotkeys options so if you go back to your controller button which is your little d-pad looking button go all the way down to where it says hotkeys you can set up your m2 and m1 buttons if you want to for your hotkeys so I'm going to set up my M2 as my fast forward button, and then I'm going to set up my M1 to open up my pause menu. Now, if I go back, go back and press that button, it'll load up my pause menu. And that way I can just click save state if I want to. And then if I click on my M2 button, you'll notice that I can fast forward the game as fast as I want. That's basically it. And like I said, if you want to test out Nether SX2 with the latest build, which is 4058, I think, that version, I tested it out, and I don't recommend it. It doesn't, you know, it's not user-friendly. This one is the most user-friendly, latest build before the development kind of stopped. And I've tested a lot of games with this build, and it works out great. Have a nice day. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to comment below if you have any questions. Or jump into the Discord, because I do have a Discord that I try to jump into now more often. And... Give a hand when I can. Have a nice day. See you next time. I'm going to go play some Crash. Bye!